Well, we're looking at security this morning as uh, the first topic for conversation on the program today because Nigeria is facing what can easily, without any argument or shadow of doubt, an uncommon threat to the good of the nation. It's a serious situation that bodes, uh, that, that makes one begin to wonder how did we get here? Why are we here at this point in time? We're having something that's never ever happened in the history of Nigeria. We're having it happen now. We have a situation where terrorist groups are unleashing an army of female suicide bombers uh, in some part of the country. A female suicide bomber believed to be about 14 years old uh, detonated explosives on Wednesday, July the 30th, at the Kano State Polytechnic in the city that has been under attack by female bombers in the past one week, killing three people. Now, just recently, there was also the story of a 10-year-old that was found strapped with IED. And that begins to make you wonder. This is a new phase to the terror attack that Nigeria has experienced. Uh, to have this conversation with us, we have a lecturer in security management and strategies from University of Lagos, not Jim Shobo. Good morning and welcome to Sunrise today. Good morning, sir. And then on the other side, we've got uh, Mr. Tunde Kilani, who yeah. is Akoni. Yeah, Tunde Akoni. Okay, Kilani is on your mind. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard He's my brother and was once my boss in the television industry. Uh, Tunde Akoni is here, not Tunde Kilani. <laughs> he is a media and conflict scholar. Good morning and welcome. Thanks. Well, I'll start with you, um, Adia Najim Shobo, Colonel Shobo. What we have now is an unleashing of female suicide bombers. It's not even common anywhere in the world for starters. It is unusual. We will not say it is unheard of. But it is extremely unusual. How do we begin to explain or contemplate how to deal with this kind of situation? Well, these are the byproducts of uh, <coughs> globalization. And uh, if you take a look at it, right in the past, about two years ago, I gave a lecture in Unilag at uh, one of the events there, where I was introducing them to the recent bombing uh, techniques where women are now use what we call breast implant and then opening the breast of the lady put the explosive inside sew it back and then they send her to the theater where it could be cured within three four days and she goes to the street but that was not common in nigeria in the past two years but recently you discovered that uh, after the capture of uh, the, the, the kidnap of the chibo girls we now have female suicide bombers who have been introduced into our system those are the impact of globalization, so it's not a new thing, and it's part of the trend that we have to live with. They've come to stay with us one after the other, we continue to eliminate them through elimination by interaction. Uh, but uh, when you say that globalization, where in the world would we say we've had series of female suicide bombers? Well, there are su suicide bombers, probably because they are not reported. If you go to Pakistan, we have them. If you go to Iran, we have them. If you go to uh, 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 Iraq, we have them. So the fact that uh, only very few of, 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 of Nigerian uh, female uh, suicide bombers are emerging now is not a new thing. So what does this say, you know, bringing in the, the female suicide bombers? What does this say about this Boko Haram um, insurgents? Well, when you are looking at terrorists, conventionally, the terrorist does not, it's not limited to a man, it's not limited to a woman, it's a combination of both sexes. So it depends on who, what target you want to approach. Women are used to approach softer targets. They move in unnoticed, they moved in unsuspected, and they come in, they have work and they disappear or they get lost in the, in the, in the exercise. So the issue of women coming in now as suicide bombers is part of the global teaching. In the past, if we have not seen it in Nigeria, the fact that it has happened means what we have been teaching in the past is what is coming to play now. Okay, uh, Mr. Connie, when you look at a situation where we begin to not only have female suicide bombers, and you then have them as young as 10, 14, 
What does this mean for a nation like Nigeria? Uh, well, uh, let me start by saying that uh, <clears throat> I agree with um, Colonel Shobo. Am I right? Okay. I agree with him uh, with, the, with his uh, assertion to the effect that this is part of uh, globalization in extending to Nigeria. Uh, but the, tra the, 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 the challenge and the tragedy of our situation is that Nigeria does not um, seem to regularly benefit from the positive extensions of whatever globalization is throwing off you know, all the time. Why is it that it's this suicide bombing thing that will be one of the few uh, uh, manifestations of the strands of globalization? That's the question that we need to you know, ruminate over and over. Uh, but um, besides uh, Konaishubo's uh, postulation, it's also the fact that um, we also need to look at what um, uh, scholars have described as you know, the, 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 youth, the youth bulge theory. Uh, there's so much discontent in the land. A uh, series of, I mean, several governments that we have had over time have not done well. There is gross misappropriation of priority in Nigeria. Our leaders don't have correct focus of what they should address from time to time. Yeah, they, don't, they don't go, they, they refuse to get properly schooled before they go into government. And we can begin to name some of our leaders. Gowan did not go to the university until after he had left office as head of state. Obasanjo, it was after he left as uh, president that he then suddenly remembered that he had to do something at the National Open University. Um, you know, we can go on. So when you have people who are here prepared to run governments, they go in there to just scatter themselves and lose focus. And what we end up reaping is what we are harvesting now, you know. Uh, disorderliness, violence everywhere. Um, I mean, just everything negative that you can think of. What exactly are we getting right? And then the question you also ask is what exactly is Nigeria exporting to the world? Okay, now let, let me take you to, back to the issue of this, um, using the females as uh, suicide bombers. The, the country is, everything seems not to be going right in some areas, and um, especially the security issue. Nigeria, every week now you hear of bombing here, bombing there. When do you think this is going to end? A whole lot of people have talked about, okay, this is how it could end. This is how, you know, to, to, to settle this. Do you see end in sight? Uh, well, you know, there is so much de deceit in governance in this part of the world. Um, I remember watching your guys here, you know, undertake what I could call uh, a somewhat thorough analysis of the claim or the, or the assertion by the recently appointed um, uh, Chief Home Minister of the other time. A major statement he made then was that he was going to ensure that this insurgency problem, this Boko Haram thing, will be contained by April. You know, some of us were, we were excited. Um, I mean, but we will not be convinced that indeed what he was promising was possible. And lo and behold, I, I, I watch your guys here try to uh, dissect the, the statement that he made. And um, part of the conclusion that they reached then was that, well, uh, until April you know, comes, then we'll see, we'll see whether it's going to be true or it was not going to be But that, it was difficult. It will be difficult that that will turn out to be true. Now, uh, the point I'm trying to make is that those who are in the position of authorities, who are in the right um, you know, offices to address this issue of insecurity, like I said the other time, are ill prepared to be there. They're just like um, you know, businessmen who are seeing the position they are occupying as a uh, means of uh, you know, uh, attracting as much wealth as possible to themselves. There were stories 
about some of them who just left office, some of them who just died. I mean, uh, you won't deny this because all, I mean, all of these stories were in the media openly. Uh, and then since the army officer made that claim that the insurgency 